Good evening. What a nice day here in South Carolina. Um, just want to talk to you a little bit today on uh, growing up here as a young boy, South Carolina. Um, back when I started hunting, we didn't really know what tree standing or steel hunting or anything was. Only only thing we know was dog hunting. Dog driving. Um, had the shotguns, buckshot. Yeah. Drove the deer out the woods, across the road with the dogs. Thing about that was, when you was dog driving, the deer knew you was on the road waiting for them. And they didn't come out there with no steady shot. Sometimes you get a buck to stop in the road and look at you, but most of the time he knowed you was there waiting. He come across that road. He come across it, laid down. You had to be fast. But as I got older, we started to get into steel hunting a little bit. Um, and we were learning. I was learning too. I was 15, 16 years old, trying to learn how to steal hunt. We first started trying to steal hunt some. And didn't know a whole lot about it. The first deer that I ever took with a rifle, steel hunting, I, I took with my brother's 30 alt 6, but not 30 alt, 30 30 with a scope. And I not know it the years later, but they used to give the 30 30 the nickname of the crippler or the pan gun because at a hundred yards if you hit a pie pan you was lucky with it because it wasn't supposed to be real accurate but you got to think back in the 70s even in the 60s before my time the 30-30 and people didn't think about accuracy long range shooting and all that back out in the country Bringing home the meat and putting meat on the table is what they thought about. So you just grab the 30-30 out the corner many times with no scope because you wasn't planning on making no two, three, four hundred yard shots. You was planning on putting meat on the table. So a hundred yards is pretty much all you was looking for. You just wanted something over to bring that deer down. And the chest cavity is the size of a pie pan. So I don't care what the critics say about the 30-30. Chest cavity is the size of a pie pan. So if you can hit a pie pan at 100 yards, that's what the 30-30 was meant for. It wasn't meant to be no long-range rifle. I mean, you put a scope on there, you got the 125, maybe 150 yards. And But she, of course, with the blunt bullet, she's going to start dropping fast. But... It did what it was meant to do, put meat on the table. Um, anyhow, after the 30-30, I killed that first buck with the 30-30. Then we started getting into steel hunting more. And only rifle I had was rifle left down to me by my dad after he had passed away. And I was three years old. Um, but... Didn't have no scope on it. Um, but anyhow, I started shooting at some when we go still hunting. My brother, he bought him a 308. And me and him started still hunting and trying to learn how to still hunt and everything. Uh, the only rifle I had that I could shoot further than what I could shoot with my 16 gauge shotgun, I started off with a 20 when I was seven years old. But I got around 12 years old, I got a 16 gauge automatic. But the furthest thing I could shoot that I had was what my dad left me was um, 303 British. And I took it out the closet, bought bullets for hit, and started practicing with it, learning how to shoot it a little bit. But the bullets were expensive. Well, you got to think about now, this is in the early 80s, back when I started shooting this. Because I was only probably 83, 84. I was only like 
15, 16 years old, 14, something like that. But anyhow, the 303 British, this thing has a lot of history behind it. And to me, this gun has a lot of sentimental value because it was left to me by my dad. Um, I think it first came out, the 303, in the 1880s. I think like m maybe 1888 and was using black powder at the time. And after so long, then they, the Mauser came out. And the Mauser was using a smokeless powder, which gave it, it wouldn't corrode the barrel as bad and everything. Um, but anyhow, talking about this old rifle, the 303 has been around for many years. Had seen a many a war for the British. It has been produced, I forgot the state, but America produced it. Um, Canada, and it originated in Britain. But this particular one is from the research that was told to me, this particular one was a Canadian version because it has the star on it. But to me, it has a lot of sentimental value because it's, it's what I started off steel hunting with, deer standing with. Um, it pretty much is around the ballistics of a 308 if you use the Spitzer bullet. But the bullet it was originated to use was the round nose bullet or ball bullet. And there's been many trials on this caliber and all that through the years. Um, I'd even heard of people that they had experimented with uh, like a hard paper, cardboard in the end of the bullet the plastic in the end of the bullet and all that and it would do so much damage and all that that it was inhumane so the they wanted the bullet outlawed a lot of times that be, because of the the British were looking for mo range and everything out of this caliber bullet because they had I guess had been with it so long and the, the Mauser was out doing everything once the Mauser came out on the battlefield. Mo range, mo ballistics and all that, so. But the original bullet, I think, was a 215 grain. And Britain learned that they dropped down to a 174 grain and went with the Spitzer bullet that they could increase their range a lot and get get your energy up out the barrel muzzle blast way up higher than, than what the round nose bullet was and by using it. But, and I have some Spitzer bullets, but the only thing I have with me here today is um, round nose bullets. And anyhow, this is a 1943 MK1 rifle. Um, you have your open sight shooting up close. I think maybe up to 300 yards, I'm not sure. Your safety is on the side. This is your safety. You push it up, the fire, back for safety. For long range, you have your clip. And I'm not sure, I think Last time I'd messed with it, I think I had it set up to like 300 yards through the peep, through the peephole. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a screw here. I can dial it right on up to, to out there, but my eyes so bad I can't shoot that far. <laughs> but um, for over 70 years, this is what 
Britain depended on, did so much on, and everything, and had a 10 round clip. Pops in, pops out. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a 1943 MK1. And uh, the guy had messaged me according to the numbers that where he had seen action at, the country of or uh, where it's seen action at. I know it comes from Canada and all that. He explained all that to me in the video. But the wood and everything down to the stock. I mean, but with the sentimental value, it's just something you look back upon as you get older and realize what you started off with and what you've held on to for so many years. And I'll show you a little bit about the bullet and everything. Oh, yeah. I have several bullets here. Uh, first one, uh, that's a 17 cal. Now there's the um, 3030 next day. That's an old bullet, so it's faded. 243. That's one of the rifles I have. 243, nice rifle. Um, hit to get out there fast. And next to hit is a 7 millimeter 08. Now, 7 millimeter 08 and the 243 have the same case capacity. Both of those are off of a 308. That's where both of them bullets it sprang from. It they were just neck down, just neck down to their size. 243 is a little smaller neck, smaller diameter bullet. 